Richard, thank you for sharing your message with us You're today. Welcome. I loved Thanks. what you said about exploring the depths. Mm -hmm. And I'm wondering, that requires a, a bit of a persistent openness and patience from us, yes, doesn't it, does. it? It's not something that comes lightly. Yeah, and I think that's what we think that it's supposed to be. It, it is, and I think a call, as, as I grew up thinking about it, is something that happens sudden, suddenly. And oftentimes when I heard this preached, it was more like they left everything and followed him right away. And that, this way of thinking means that we're called into a relationship which does involve openness, risk, trust, and a gradual accepting of that relationship over time. Call to discipleship um, perhaps is costly, mm -hmm. as German mm -hmm. Christian martyr Dietrich Bonhoeffer mm -hmm. conveys in his mm -hmm. cost of discipleship. Mm -hmm. What costly because it calls us to follow grace because it calls us to follow Christ. I'd be curious, Richard, mm -hmm. what are those moments in your own personal journey where God has called you into deeper waters. Well, Have you gone kicking and screaming? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oh yeah. I think it's really a call. I think that those, those moments when I know that I have to let go of control of how this is going to go. When I let go of the way I think my life should go, or if I were to get this qualification or get that degree or something of that sort, then I'll be responding to God's call. When all along, it's, I want you. God says, I want you. I want you to live into the depths of who you are. And that is risky. You're saying the day-to-day -day, uh, concerns and challenges of your professional life? Sure, sure. I think that, I think we believe that what we have to sacrifice is a way, is what I'm doing, a job that I'm doing, or a profession that I'm doing. And sometimes it may certainly involve a redirection in our vocational path. But I think uh, the abiding concern that God has is, is to call us into a knowledge of God's love, not only for our, just ourselves, it's not something we hold on to for ourselves, but how much God loves and is looking for a relationship with all humanity. And it sounds like it's allowing God through, through Jesus to lead us to our call as much as anything. Yeah. You talk about control. Yeah. But, but again, being open to that idea that we will be led if we trust, as Simon Peter did yes. in this case. And I think what the place where we're led is to the depths. And it's there, in this passage at least, Jesus says, if you, if you would let down your nets once again into the depths of this water, then you will find the abundance I'm talking about. Now. You grew up in the Baptist church. Your yes. father is a Baptist minister today yes, he is. in the Southern Baptist yes. Convention in yes. South Carolina. Yes, that's right. Uh, what was that like? Uh, is that where you learned your art of storytelling? My dad is a very passionate preacher and is always concerned to relate the claims of the gospel to everyday life and to the questions people are asking. He has a pastor's heart, and he's a, he is a, an enthusiastic, he's enthusiastic about what he says. And he does tell some really good stories, and he comes from a storytelling family, which is where I learned from my uncles and, and my relatives. You what do a good workshops story. on yes, storytelling. Right. Now, now, take us into one of those. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> well, what I would, what I would do is, is to say, first of all, we're all storytellers we all know how to narrate ourselves. Uh, we have the gifts to be expressive. We have the gifts to use our bodies, uh, to find the language that is for the ear. We have, we have the capacity to bring people into another world, the world of the story. And we do it all the time in everyday speech and conversation. So it's not this rarefied thing that people think they've got to grasp. It's basically to give the person permission to build on what they're already doing naturally. People say, I'm not a storyteller, I'm not a story. Well, you'd be surprised at how often you tell stories in your everyday life. So that's how it begins. So you're not, you talk about the art of preaching, for instance, mm -hmm. that pretends to have a higher uh, kind of yeah. value to it. But you're yeah. saying it's really simpler than that. It's, 
embracing the, the gifts that we've been giving and bringing them to full fruition. In yeah, sense. yeah, I, I think it is. I, I think it's a God-given, I think I, there's a story that I tell where at the end of it it says, God loves stories. And I think the scriptures are evidence of, of that. And, and all the great religious traditions are, are evidence that God loves stories. God likes to hear a good story. You have a background in theater. Yes. God loves yeah. drama in the pulpit, yes. too, oh, right, yeah. if well, it's authentic? Yes, uh, if it's authentic. How, um, you, your sons, Colin and Den Dylan, Dylan. Dylan. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. uh, growing up on stories from grandfather and father, how has it made a difference well, in their my, understanding of faith? My, uh, my older son is a playwright. Mm -hmm. And so he puts his stories on stage. His vision is a little different than mine. It's his own vision. And I think he learned that from all of us, is to get clear what your vision of things is. And my other son is a musician. He tells his stories, as it were, in music. I don't know that he would say it's a story that I tell in music, but it's expressing myself through music. So I think that's the legacy. And their faith, I think, has not much to do with what's codified and outlined in some kind of system. Their faith, I believe, has to do in, with their own faith in each other, in, our, uh, in the love they have for their friends, and in looking for, looking for that which is authentic and truthful to their lives. Thanks for bringing that to us today, Richard. You're welcome.